With the launch of the much anticipated Resident Evil 3 remake happening today, I thought it might be cool to make a quick video to talk about my Resident Evil game collection and history with this much beloved long running series. I have no idea when exactly my first Resident Evil experience occurred, but I do know that it was at my friend Bob's house in his parents' basement. I had come over to play video games and he said he wanted to show me this game called Resident Evil. After I asked Bob about this memory the other day, we agreed that it was probably his copy of Resident Evil Director's Cut, which was released in September of 1997. Bob showed me the beginning of the game and I remember sitting on the couch completely fascinated as he completed the first zombie encounter and began exploring the first floor of the Spencer Mansion. I recall thinking that the game's sparse audio and voice acting were somehow both funny and creepy, and the game's violence and gore were unlike anything else I'd seen in a game at the time. I was only around eight years old when the game released, but that introduction to the Resident Evil series definitely made a subtle mark on me as both a video game and horror fan. I didn't get my own copy of the PlayStation game until much later, but I'm really glad to have it in my collection. I've also got the 2006 DS version subtitled Deadly Silence, which my brother bought for me as a birthday gift. Nevertheless, it wasn't until 2002 when I owned a Nintendo GameCube that I was able to play through the first Resident Evil story in the comfort of my own home. By this time, Resident Evil had long since established itself as the massive franchise that it is, which was further bolstered by the release of the Paul W.S. Anderson film in the spring of 2002. In that year, I was still a kid who couldn't go into a store and buy an M-rated game on my own, so I had to convince my mom to use my birthday money to make the purchase for me. Thanks, Mom. I suspect that I beat the remake at least half a dozen times, but I stopped keeping track after the first few playthroughs. Like just about everyone else, I could not believe how atmospheric and polished this game was. I had never seen game graphics that looked this good, and I really think that this game and its follow-up, Resident Evil Zero, contributed not only to my enduring Resident Evil fandom, but my longtime love of the Nintendo GameCube. As far as Resident Evil Zero goes, I think I've only played through this story once so far. I borrowed a copy from a friend years ago so that I could go through it, and I actually didn't get a copy for myself until I got into game collecting about six years ago. From there, what I should have done is played Resident Evil 2 and 3, but it was already 2005 and Resident Evil 4 had come out. As we all know, this game advanced the franchise significantly and changed third-person shooter games as we know them forever. I've beaten this game dozens of times over the years, and I've played it on GameCube, Wii, PS3, and PS4. I think my favorite way to play it was actually on the Wii, somewhat surprisingly, but I thought that the Wii Remote and Nunchuck combination worked really well for aiming and for moving Leon around. Resident Evil 5 came out in early 2009 when I was about halfway through my college career. I know this game hits a few sour notes for some people, largely because of its reduced horror elements and emphasis on action, but I personally loved it, boulder punching and all. 5 is one that carries additional nostalgia for me because I played through the full campaign cooperatively, both with a great friend of mine and with my brother one summer break. I'd say I've probably played this one five or six times, and it's one that my wife and I have also attempted to play cooperatively a couple times as well. Sadly, I kind of took an unplanned five-year break from the series between 2012 when Resident Evil 6 came out and early 2019 when I finally played Resident Evil 7. I do want to play Resident Evil 6, but I haven't prioritized it over the years due to the general consensus about its quality. Resident Evil 7, on the other hand, was a blast, and in my opinion, provided an experience unlike any other in the franchise so far. Its first-person perspective, swampy setting, Texas Chainsaw characters, and those modernized hide-and-seek segments, all of them proved that Capcom seriously wanted to shake things up for this series. I don't have a physical copy of it anymore, but I also played a good chunk of Resident Evil Revelations last year. I thought it was decent, and I can definitely see why it was a really well-liked title on the Nintendo 3DS when it came out, but when I was playing through it on my Xbox, I found that I wasn't really enjoying it enough to fully finish the main campaign. Finally, the most recent Resident Evil title I've completed was the Resident Evil 2 Remake. Somewhat shamefully, this was my first time experiencing Resident Evil 2, and I wish I'd gotten to it sooner, but this was definitely worth the wait. This remake was easily one of my favorite games I've beaten in recent memory, and playing it on my Xbox One X was a graphical smorgasbord. The Resident Evil 3 remake looks incredible, and I hope to play it soon too. In the meantime, there's a number of Resident Evil titles in my collection that I still need to play. Here they are.
right guys, that's a quick retrospective at my gaming history with the Mighty Resident Evil series, and I hope you enjoyed it. Now, there are obviously tons of other releases and variants out there, and I used to actually have more Resident Evil games in my collection, particularly on PS3 that I no longer have, but I'm really glad that I still have the ones that I showed you here today. Leave me a comment below telling me what your favorite Resident Evil game is, and if this was your first cross chop video and you liked what you saw, please leave me a thumbs up and please subscribe. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and play heavy. This is the void,